With the Sunshine Double done and dusted for another year and the clay court season only just around the quarter. We had some massive changes after the Miami Open to a lot of players outside the top 10, not just inside that top 10. Let's go have a look at who actually won the tournament last week. So over on the WTA side of things, we had Danielle Collins winning her biggest trophy of her career, taking out Rabakina in the final, and it's now back-to-back -back final losses in Miami for Rabakina. 7-5-6-3. Great win for Collins, and she definitely got a boost in the rankings for that. And on the men's side, Yannick Sinner, third time lucky, winning the tournament against Dimitrov in the final. 6-3, 6-1. He was flawless all week, Sinner. And he also got a boost in the rankings. In fact, both guys did after that final. All right, let's have a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings over the last week. Alexandrova. She goes to a career high number 15 in the world. One spot higher than last week after making the semifinals. Not only that, beating Pagul and Sviantek along the way, so confidence and a high ranking. Danielle Collins, of course, winning the title, goes up third 31 spots to 22 in the world. So she'll be seated at some of the big events coming up over the clay season. And Marijan, he goes up 19 spots to a career high 38 in the world after having a great run into the quarterfinals of this event. So some massive boost there for some players that did well here. Players that went down to the rankings, Gustaya had a really good run here last year. Goes down to 29 in the world, five spots lower than last week. Eubanks, also somebody who played well in Miami in 2023. He drops nine spots to number 41 in the world. And Rusevori, same as Eubanks, got to the quarterfinals last year and dropped 17 spots at 65 in the world after failing to defend those points. So the players that did well got a massive boost and the players that didn't do so well really dropped down the rankings, unfortunately. All right, let's go look at the WTA rankings for this week. No massive changes. Fiontek, she stays at number one. Extending her lead against Sabalenka, who's at number two. Goff, she stays at three. And Rabakina stays at four. You've got Pagula at five and Jabur at six. But we do have a change in the middle with Zachary going up two spots after making the quarterfinals of Miami to number seven in the world, pushing down Zhang and Von Drusova down to number eight and nine. So Vondi didn't play and Zhang didn't have a good week. So... Zachary got rewarded for that. She has a, had a really good Sunshine Double. And coming in at number 10 is Ostapenko for now. Just hanging on to that 10th spot. But with the clay court season coming up, we've got a lot of players, especially at the top of the rankings. Sviantek Sabalenka, for example. A lot of points to defend over the next couple of months. So we'll keep an eye on that. Little battle between one and two as we get onto the clay. Looking at the race of the finals and no change with... Sviantek staying at number one, but Rabakina, she goes up to number two, pushing Sabalenka down to number three after making the final in Miami. They're very close on points as well with that number two and three, so over the clay season will be really fun to watch them. Zhang comes in at number four with Goff at number five. Ostapenko stays at number six, but Danielle Collins flies up the rankings 19 spots into that number seven spot after winning 1,000 points in Miami, and that pushes Paolini, who won Dubai, another 1,000 event, down to number eight, so Collins, huge boost in the rankings and race to the finals after winning that tournament. Kalinskaya, she stays at number nine, with Kostruk going down two spots to number 10, pushing Pavlyuchenkova completely out of the rankings to the race of the finals. So that win by Collins was massive, really pushing players out of the way. And if you win a 1,000 event, you're going to be in the top seven or top eight for the year, especially this early in the season. So really interested to see how she does on the clay, if she can keep that ranking. But race to the finals starting to look interesting. Over on the men's side of things, no change at the top with Djokovic staying at number one. But Yannick Sinner, he overtakes Alcaraz with that win in Miami. And he is now the world number two. That is a career high for him. And he knocks Alcaraz down to number three out of the top two for the first time, I think, since the US Open in 2022. So Alcaraz being at number three, he hasn't been used to that lately. So Yannick Sinner, career high after winning Miami. Medvedev, he stays at number four with Zverev at number five. Rublev at six with Runa at seven. Kasparud stays at number eight. But Grigor Dimitrov, back into the top 10 for the first time since 2018. After making the final in Miami, he goes up to number nine. That's three spots higher than last week, pushing Hercash down to number 10. And he pushed Dimonor completely out of the top 10 for this week. So great to see Dimitrov getting some rewards and getting back in that top 10 for the first time in a long time. And he is the only one-handed backhand in the top 10. So he's kind of saving the one-hander as well after City Pass fell out of the top 10 earlier in the year. So great to see Dimi and a one-hander back in the top 10 this week. Going over to the race of the finals now. And again, no change at the top with Sinner. Just extending his lead, adding another 1,000 points to his total with Medvedev making the semis, staying at number two. We do have a little bit of a change, though, with Alcaraz going down to number four and Zverev going up to number three after Alcaraz failed to make it past the quarterfinals and Zverev making it to the semis. Dimonor, he stays in there at number five, but Dimitrov, he goes into that top six, seven spots higher than last week after making the final of Miami and adding 650 points, pushing Rublev down to seven. Baez goes down to number eight. Kasper Ruud gets a little bit of a boost going up one spot to number nine with Umbert going down two spots to number 10, and Tommy Paul falling out of the top 10 completely for the race of the finals, mainly because of that Dimitrov final that he made. So 
Very fun top 10. Of course, most of these players will be expecting to see at the AW Finals, but the big name missing is Novak Djokovic. He's currently 12 in this race, hasn't played that much tennis, and when he has played, he hasn't done that, much, that well. So Djokovic over the clay season, really looking to see him in this list of players, but a lot of familiar names, and it's really starting to take shape. And there it is. They are the rankings for this week, and that's it for the hardcore season. The first three months of the season, hard courts for the most part. Of course, there was a little bit of clay in there as well, but now we go to the clay, exclusively on clay. No more hardcore tennis until, I think, mid-July or somewhere around there, end of July. So we're just going to be playing clay for the next couple of months. Really keen to see how Sinner does on the clay, because it's not his best surface. He can play on clay, but it's not his best. Also, see uh, Friontek does on clay, because she dominates on the clay usually, and she is number one in the world and trying to keep that lead against Sabalenka, but let me know down in the comments below. What's been the most exciting part of the Sunshine Double for you? Has it been seeing players like Collins have a fairy tale run? That was such a great story. Maybe Dimitrov getting back in the top 10 has been a great story, or maybe it's just that the best guys in the world and the best girls in the world have been playing really, really well. Sinner dominating again and again and again. I mean, this guy just can't lose at the moment. But there it is. That is the rankings after the first part of the season. Now we're onto the clay.